The Carpenters Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah! Glory, 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 glory! Hallelujah! Let's stand up and celebrate the King of Glory this morning! Father, we bless you. Thank you for your presence in this house. Thank you for the spirit of faith that is real in this place this morning. Thank you because you will meet every man, every woman, every boy, every girl at their point of needs. Thank you for this atmosphere. Lord, today there is salvation. Complete healing. In the precious name of Jesus, thank you for this house. Thank you for the great work that you are doing in this house. Our hearts are filled with gratitude because highs have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of any man the things you have prepared for us in this place. Lord, thank you for the revelation by your spirit, line upon line. Precept upon precept, we are married to the prophetic word. And we will see the fulfillment of your praise. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. amen and amen. Don't sit down yet. Don't sit down yet. Please, don't sit down yet. Uh, you know, as a preacher, you are anxious uh, when you get into a space. But I want to say something to us this morning. Immediately I walked into this place by the first worship, the songs. Uh, each of the songs that our ministers have taken, it just confirmed the word that I have for us this morning. And I, I, I just thank God. So I'm settled. I feel like I'm home. So I'm free to declare the counsel of God. Because sometimes as a preacher, you are not sure if you are not giving a topic, so you are just uh, swimming in certain things, and it's easier for you to just enter, and then you look at the song, look at the atmosphere, and then you can change the message. But I believe in my heart that God has a word for us this morning. And let me also say something to you. I was in a remote village in Zambia. So my phone rang, and it was Pastor Ketch. He said, Pastor, are you good morning? I said, good morning, my said, I want you to do things, two things for me. Then he mentioned one. I said, well, consider it done, but when I get back home. And then he said, the second one, Sunday the 19th of May, he said, I want you to come to the Carpenter's Church. He said, is it free? I said, even if it's not free, I will come. If it is you, I will come. I want us to celebrate the gift of God in this place. Let's just... Is that the way to welcome her back home? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know I have 60 minutes. That's how I ought to ask her so that I can come back again. I will stay within my time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Ma. Um, Falaki and I, we honor you. We love you dearly from our hearts. Thank you for all that you do. I don't want you to sit down yet. I wrote it down, so I'm reading it out. Uh, we thank God for who you are. Uh, you are a gracious woman. And that is the testimony. Some people have reached out to me and said, I, I, I saw you are going to Porter Court. He says, that is a gracious woman that many people don't know in the body of Christ today. So you are a gracious woman. And it's the same word that Pastor, when I told Pastor the talks, because we were together over this last week, uh, I was coming to Porter Court. He said, that gracious woman, he said, greet her for me. So I'm giving that greeting this morning on behalf of himself and Dr. Akuna. Thank you for who you are to us and the body of Christ. You are a wife. You are a mother. You are a nurturer. You are a shepherd. And then this last one, you are a gatekeeper. I like to say, because I'm saying this publicly, so that the people who are also just joining us at whatever 
uh, time, they can understand it. Many years ago, the key to this city was handed over to you. And it will have me say to you, Romans eleven twenty nine. 29, he hasn't changed his mind. He's still with you. But I sense a transition so that he can release you into that. There is a change in season for you. Uh, to the body of Christ globally. I know you, it's not because you recently made a trip, but you know what I'm saying to you, man. There is just a change in season. Jesus said when we look up and we see these changes, it simply suggests there is time for harvest. So the time for global harvest is here. And TCC, we can only, I know, I know what it is. Congregation don't want to release their pastors. And, but there are many people that have been raised in this place. So when you see her, enjoy her. When it's time for her to move, don't hold her back in your mind. Praise the Lord. And I'd like to celebrate your husband too. So if you are watching anywhere from around the world, thank you for being the true description of the husband of the Proverb 31 woman. You are an elder at the gate. I want you to celebrate. Uh, yeah. I, I know I won't call. He's warned me not to call him pastor. So let's celebrate, Brother Emeka. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there's just that grace around you. There's just that grace. It's unusual. And his life is a testimony for many of us. Uh, is an inspiration, is a model. And I just pray that the strength of God uh, will continually rest upon him, rest upon your family, his countenance of favor around you in Jesus' name. And everyone in leadership here, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Shola. Uh, thank you, every other pastor. I get to know you uh, maybe after. Uh, the, I don't know if you have the king's board, but everyone who is in leadership position, team leader, unit leader, thank you uh, for the things that you do. Awesome and glorious things are spoken about you. And as you hold our hands in this place, there is more. There is more with God. And I want you to know your liberal soul shall continually be made fat in God. As you water the word of God, the, water, the, the work of God in this place, your souls will be water. People in the protocol, hospitality, Brother Smart, Brother Akin, Sister Ellen, uh, everyone. Where yesterday, I couldn't hit more than one wrap of pandemic. Because if I do, I will not, maybe I will just be waking up now. But thank you for having us here. Every member of this community, thank you. Uh, greetings from our church, the Lighthouse, and the Chosen Bridge Church. We have two expressions. Um, we're so glad to be here. I came with Pastor Benga. Let's celebrate the gift of God one more time this morning as we please take our seats. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. Praise God. First Chronicles 12.32. First Chronicles 12.32. I do quite a lot of Bible uh, reading this morning. TCE, TCC, it's raining. That's the title of my message. And when I say raining, I do not mean R R A I N I N G. I mean R A I N Y. When I say it's raining, R-A-N-N-I-G, it means there is a physical rain. But this message has to do that it is raining, R-A-I-N-Y, which means there is a kairos moment. There is a season that has come upon you. It's a window period. And this message, uh, people will fall into categories listening to it. Some people, uh, after this message, they go through conception. Some other people, after this message, because they are, their baby is kicking, uh, they go through um, what I call a, a moment of expectation. 
some other people, it's a time to give back. It's a time to give back. But there is an activation in this service this morning. So in First Chronicles 12, 32, the word of the Lord said something in verse 32, which is a very popular scripture. Please, let me also put, there's nothing I'm going to preach this morning that is new to you. This is the word of faith, church. I'm just going to stress that which has been laid as foundation. It says, and of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. So the sons of Issachar, number one, they had the understanding of the times. Two, they were alive enough to know what Israel ought to do. So there is a spirit of knowing at this time. You know what time is it in the realm of the spirit. You know the agenda of God in our generation. You know the things that you need to do. And what you need to do at this time is actually the cross of this message this morning. There is knowing what to do. There is knowing how to do it. There is knowing when to do it. There is knowing where to do it. There is the knowing of whom to do it with. So at this time, the, like the sons of Issachar, they had the understanding of the times. Secondly, they know what Israel ought to do. TCC is evolving into a great army. The great army of the Lord. So, this is the time of increase and expansion, says the Lord. So, this is the time of preparation. And preparation time is never a wasted time. So, this morning... He said, the sons of Issachar, they were just 200 men, if you read that story. But other tribes, some were 5,000, some were 37,000, some were 120,000, some were 28, 18,000, 3,700, 3,000. But these men, they were just 200. Because they had the understanding of the times, they know what Israel ought to do. So the 200 were the one who was commanding the thousands. Zechariah 4, 6 says, It's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit. For there is a quick work to be done. The time of sowing, the time of sowing in tear is going away. The time of harvest is coming into fall. So in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, so that I can confirm the fact that it is raining. It is raining. This is it's raining. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It's a very popular scripture. It says, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight. For you do not know what evil will be on the heart. But verse three, which is my emphasis. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the heart. If the clouds are full of rain. Can you help me with TPT? I, I do more of TPT this morning. TPT, Ecclesiastes 11.3. Maybe I should use my phone. Yeah. Okay, let me use my phone. I want to do more so that we can put it in context. Okay, there is NLT. Let's do NLT. NLT. Okay, let me, let me use my phone, sorry. 
NLT, Ecclesiastes 3.11, said something instructive there. Eleven three, sorry, eleven three. It says, "When the clouds are heavy, the rain comes down. When the clouds are heavy, the rains come down." There is an element of divine timing with this season that we are in, or we are coming into. And this time, in, I want to first say that time has gates. Time has the gates of seconds, the gates of minutes, the gates of hours, the gates of days, the gates of months, the gates of years, the gates of decades, the gates of millennium. But in Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says, God make all things beautiful in his time. So, this time is a time of conception, is a time of batting new things, is a time of delivery. I sense in my heart that this is a time of unhindered access into the dominion gate. There is a full access given to us. In Psalm 84 verse 11, it says, He will not withhold good from those who walk uprightly before him. So in this gate of time, there is a tone of finality. There is divine completion. There is bringing to full time. Everything is coming to divine completion. In Luke chapter 1 verse 37, it says, With God, nothing shall be tagged impossible. I just want to speak as I am inspired. So I may not follow the homiletics this morning. It says, For the word of God, Luke 1 37 in the NLT, for the word of God we never fail. You remember the last song that we exited with? The word of God we never fail. In verse 45, it's still talking about the same thing. Verse 45 of Luke chapter 1. It says, you are blessed because you believe that the Lord will do what he has said. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord will do what he has said. In Luke chapter 1, there was someone that we all know, we've read about. The name Elizabeth. The meaning of Elizabeth actually means hope, promise. But at that time, there was something that was militating against her. It is limiting her. It's called barrenness. Everything she wanted to do to to get, there was a limitation. So even though her name was supposed to be hot, was supposed to be promised, but the situation of her life was contrary to that. I don't know who is like that here this morning. The word of the Lord is, there shall be a performance of the things spoken to you by the Lord. All hope seems to have been lost to barrenness. But this morning, just like the word of the Lord came to Job, in Job chapter 14, verses 13 to 15, Job was asking a very serious question in that place. Let's just read it. Job chapter 14 i love that scripture i love the verse 14 he said he was asking the question if a man die shall he live again he said all the days of my heart service will i wait until my change come in job chapter 14 i just look at it verses 12 to 15 
It was like a situation. 11. As the water evaporates from a lake and a river disappears in drought, people are laid to rest and do not rise again until the heavens are no more, they will not wake up and be not be roused from their sleep. I wish I will hide in the grave. Maybe someone is saying that this morning. I wish I'm just not here anymore. I wish I don't have to go through this problem anymore. But it says, and forget me there until your anger has passed. But I love this response by God. He said, but mark your calendar. Mark your calendar. Mark your calendar. Mark your calendar to think of him again. He says, he now asks the question, can the dead live again? He said, if so, we know that the dead will live again. He said, if so, this will give me hope through all my years of struggle. And I will eagerly wait to the release of death. One translation actually says, I will wait for my resurrection. I will wait. The message this morning is to encourage you in that season of life. Please wait for the resurrection. Resurrection has come. There will no more delay. The time of completion is now. In the precious name of Jesus. Isaiah 48, which is a very popular scripture again. 43, and we come to 48. Let's go to 43 first. Forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. You miss a good place to say amen. amen. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create the rivers in the dry wasteland. God says it. We believe it. And that settles it. And we will see the fulfillment of the prophetic word. In that same rendering, in the TPT, it says, verse 18, it says, Stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I am doing something brand new. Something unheard of. He said, even now it sprouts and grows and mature. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness. And open up flowing streams in the desert. You see, for those who are engineers, they understand or understood that scripture better. Wilderness is a place where nothing grows. If you are trying to even make a road, the sand dunes won't allow you. As you are clearing the pathway, the wind is getting it back. So it's very difficult. What God is saying to us this morning in this Kairos moment, that those things that look so difficult, I am a specialist in it. The womb is no more there. But I am a specialist to give you triplets. Someone is a good place to say hey, amen. Even if you are not trusting for a child, you have people who are trusting for a child. You have neighbors, you have colleagues. So it's impossible to make a road in the wilderness. It's also impossible to have water in the desert. In fact, one of the things that keep people who walk through the desert is thirst. They're looking for water. So because it takes effort, it takes effort to get water. And if you get it, it takes effort. It's not like the usual thing. You dig ball hole there, you dig that there. It may take poles, miles apart to actually get water. And when you get it, it is seasonal. But God says, I'm overriding seasons. This is the time that I will make water in the desert place. If you read it for that, it says even the animals will be glad. So it's not just something that will affect us, something that will affect our city, something that will affect our family. Every nation 
that is identified with us will be a partaker of that in the name of the Lord Jesus. So in this current Kairos moment, there is something that the Holy Spirit has made available. Number one, the burden to pray. The burden to pray. And two, the power to push. There is a body to pray. There is also the power to push out. Because why? EDD has come. And you know EDD? You know what it does? It creates expectations. It creates expectation of good news. But while we prepare ourselves in this Kairos moment, there will be in your heart, not like the regular prayer meeting, the ones in church will be called, but there will be in your heart. Oh God, wake up, and you look at the time, you slept at 12 midnight, and it's 1.30 a.m., and you have the energy. So there is the burden to pray, there is the power to push, because what God has in mind, eyes have not seen. It, hasn't, it cannot be compared to the hold. It is something brand new. There are territories to be taken. There are lands to be conquered. There are, there are terrain to, be, to, to operate in. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there is a body to pray. There is a power to push. So at this season, what you will find out, there is a call to drink. In John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, Jesus said it. The Bible says he crowd with a loud voice. So there was burden. And there was a power to push it. He said, in the last days, he said, out of your belly, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You are not sure of how to bring solution. And then there is a bubbling on the inside of you because you have responded to the body to pray. You have responded to the power to push there is a solution. You know, I, I learned recently about the word education. The word education is from that Latin word, educo, E-D-U-C-O, which means the ability to induce solution from within. So, you know the regular education? Have you had this statement? I know you have this. They said some people went to school, but school never went through them. In other words, when they were in the, in, the, in the market space of life and they were supposed to bring solution, there was no solution because they can't make, they can't pull from the references of their former education. But this one is education from within. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of the living water. You enter into that room, into that space, and say, this is the man that we are looking for. We have this problem. We are looking for solution. And then all of a sudden, there is a bubbling. So there is a call to drink at this time. Why? Because there is a greater release for spiritual awareness. There is a greater release. That's what the power to push bring. There will be a release. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12, it said, The seeing eyes and the hearing ears, the Lord has made both. So at this time, what you see, what you hear, and now you are able to convert it into solution in matters. And you can only get that in the place of prayer, in the place of drinking. And uh, it's not here, but I know that now you read quite a whole lot of stuff where people trivialized thing. They say Singapore don't pray, China don't pray, yet they have all this department. They are trivializing the solution for the problem of humanity. Look at the major breakthrough in science and technology. There are people who had touch with the death of the supernatural. And so they are able to bring it. Breakthrough in medicine, go and check the people. There are people of faith, people who touch the depth of this. Books that have changed our life, they are written from that depth. Music that have changed our life, they are from that depth. Music that can deliver someone from depression, they are from that depth. So if there is a burden to pray, there is the power to push. You know, for a woman, conception, and then in the conception, there's an EDD. But you know what 
The midwife will say, when that time comes, and when the clouds are full, what the midwife usually say is a push. And so the power to push is an inner strength. It comes. The power to respond, it comes. It's from inner man. And that's why Paul had to pray that you will daily strengthen by God's spirit in your inner man. Paul had to pray in Ephesians 1 that the highs of your understanding will be flooded with his light. He said you will know the hope. You will know the hope of your calling. You will know the immeasurable grace. You will know the resurrection power that is made available to us who believe there is a power to push. In this Kairos moment, there is also greater manifestation of the Spirit. Greater. And I love this. We are moving in the flow. I love it. Some, like I said, this message will, will, will happen to people at their various journey in this Kairos moment. So we are moving into the flow. Some at Hankulem, Ezekiel 47. You can study some of this scripture for that. And then some people are knee deep. Some people are at their waist level. Some of us are already like that. We are swimming in the flow because what we are going for, we are leaving those things that are behind, that has gone behind. We are reaching forward for new heights of the things that have been apprehended for us in Christ Jesus. And then lastly, there is a greater push for the harvest of the heart. A greater push. A greater push. In this Kairos moment, you know, you know when I was in school, and I know many of us have probably experienced this. You know, as young people then, when you see a group of people, a group of other young guys, they always ask this question. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, guys, what is happening? And without fail in retrospect, Whoever tells us what is happening, that's where we will all go. So at this time, that's why we can't trivialize it. And at that time too, I remember that when life now happened, they call all of us NFA. Because somebody just said something. I don't know if you are part of it. I was. Someone did not even have an invitation to attend a party. He just had it from his friends. And so when they say, hey guys, what's up? He said, I, I heard about a party. And all of us, we go. We want to go and grade cash. And usually, it doesn't end well. But now, we know what, where we are going. We know what is up. We say concerning our nation, Nigeria, a lot of people express that thing. They say, we don't know how this country is going. We don't know where it is going. We know where it is going. We know the Kairos moment for delivery of everything we are pregnant for is here. Yeah. So because we know where we are going, all those people who don't know where they are going or what is happening, then we have no option but for the followers who know where we are going. Yeah. This is a great country. This land is green. It's green with opportunities. It's green with increase. It's green with business opportunity. I mean, it, it just, it's just very marvelous. Every plane that comes in here, eh, that's part of the fact of the things, the many challenges, they are filled. I do interior travels a lot. And sometimes I see people of color in my village, in the interior. What are they looking for? They have seen something under the heart of this nation. This country is blessed. It's the most blessed nation of the world. There is no, there is no minerals that is not found on that ground. They are not just minerals. They are of the A-plus category. Can I have an amen this morning? So, please, before you jack back, think about it. Pre think about it. If you have to jackpot to enhance the flow, it's okay. But don't jackpot because you are running away. And let me put, even put this to you out. If you are able to, because average jackpot is between 10 and 15 million, conservatively. If you can put 10 and 15 million together for school, and then from there to extend your stay, then it means there is a 
proficiency in you that must be touched. It means you can see beyond an average person around here. And it means if you dwell on it, the same zest, the same passion that raised that money can be put into something here for the future. Because when you jackpot, you are still jackpot dad. And when you come back, some people will sell land to you. Some people will have pushed through. There's a difference between someone who has given birth to, to a child and a teenager. A teenager doesn't understand the bad pants. He doesn't understand the kicks. I say it under God. The next five years is critical in our nation. Things are going to turn around. I'm not any party apologetics or anything. Whether the parties like it or yes, this country belongs to God. It has happened in the scriptures. The heart of kings is in God's hands. As he turns the course of a river, he turns it to his will. The Bible says, as long as we are in this world, we are the light of the world. As long as you and I still carry our green passport, we are the light of this nation. He says in Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13, in the message translation, he says, so let me tell you why you are here. Let me tell you why you are in Nigeria. You are here to be the color in this nation. It may not look like it. Our story may be like Elizabeth. We have the heart. We have the promise. But the situation, day-to-day situation of Nigeria may not correspond to that. But God says he is doing a new thing. And in this church, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house in this house shall be exalted far above every other mountain. And nations shall flow into it. It shall be said, let us go into the house of the Lord, for they will teach us his way and we will walk in the spot. Prepare yourself, says the Spirit of the Lord. Says the Spirit of the Lord. So there is the burden to pray. There is the power to push. There is the burden to pray. There is the power to push. This is the time of the greater harvest of the earth. The Bible talks about it, prophesying about it, that there will come a time, there will be an hunger, not hunger for natural food, but hunger for the word of God. He said there shall be a time where he who is not a Jew, we hold on to the state of the Jew. They said, we want to follow you to your God. He said, there shall be a time where people will see you. We are not saying we want to get married to you, but we just want to be Mr. or Mrs. So, 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 because they can identify with what God is doing with you. And this is the time. This is that hour. And we are preparing ourselves for it. The revival is not something that is coming. It's already here. We are already in the flow. I listened to someone in the course of this week. We were in a meeting together. And he said that there was a journal that was released. I'm going to look for that journal. Man. That in the end times, it's been written so many years ago, that the revival, the revival that will change the world, prepare the world for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to break out in Nigeria. Um, I, 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 I would ask, Reverend, because we're all there together. It was a white man. So that's why you see some of them coming. There's just something about this nation. And the interesting thing, they are coming while we are packing our bags to go. I identify with you. The same affliction happens to your brethren. We are all in A-band now, isn't it? Oh, you are not in A-band in Podakot? Band A? So we are being taught to switch off our light every time now. Praise God. But greater days are here. So what do you do at this time? What do you do? The truth is that there is an unusual supply of the spirit. Paul paid for that. So what do you do? So that we don't waste this. Number one, develop unusual hunger and thirst for God. Develop it. Develop it. This is not religion. This is relationship. I love it when I came in here this morning. I mean, tears couldn't just stop flowing from my face when I saw people. And I know that these, <coughs> the people here, 
are people who know God. You see, 11, Daniel 11, 32. So I saw people on the floor. I love it. I love such things. That we can bow before our maker. We can hold our allegiance and obedience to him. So let there be hunger. Let there be hunger. And thirst. Psalm 63, Paul, not Paul, David was writing. He said, oh Lord my God. And before you do the first call in the morning, make that thing happen. He said, Hale in the morning will I seek you. He said, my soul thirsts for you. My heart yearns for your courts to see your power and your glory such that as I have seen you in the sanctuary. Develop unusual. I say unusual. Secondly, at this time, learn to lean into the Holy Spirit. Learn it. Learn it. We are a world church, so these things have been taught. Go back on the notes again. Learn it. How does God speak? How does he instruct? A lot of believers today don't know, except when they want to get married. That's when they know how to hear God. Do you? No. Hearing God is every day, I fear. Every businessman in this place and every believer, please, You must know Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my own eyes. One translation says, I will choose or lead you in the best pathway for your lives. So it means there are alternatives, there are options. But when we commit, it said, I will instruct you. Another one says, don't be like the horse that must be forced with the use of beets and bridles. No. You know, I, I've had in the years past, I mean, when people want to sound spiritual, they will tell you that God has asked me to do something, but I'm struggling with him. <laughs> so those who can't speak to but if you are sp- struggling with God, you are prolo- You know, the Bible talks about something. It's a quality of the spirit. Long suffering. So your suffering will be long. There's no need to struggle with God. All things are ours in Christ Jesus. All things are ready for us in Christ Jesus. All things are ours. It's a blessed be God. Ephesians 1 3. Who has blessed us with all, not some, all, all. All. We have dominion over sin, over poverty, over sickness. We have dominion over limitations of heart. We are of God, little children. We have overcome them. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Can I have an amen this morning? So we are overcomers. We are not trying to overcome. So whatever is happening now, it says in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So develop unusual hunger and task. Learn to hear. The second scripture every business person should know is Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30, 21. He said, you will hear a voice behind your ear saying, this is the way. So it means there are many ways. But for you, because you are in covenant relationship, you can read it in context. You can read it in context. If you read it from um, verse 19 to 21, you put it in context. He said, but you will hear a voice behind your ear saying, this is the way, what you need. Another scripture is Isaiah 48, 17. Every business person should know it. Isaiah 48, 17. He said, I am the Lord God, your redeemer. I love that. I am the one who causes you to profit. I love that. I am the one who leads you in the way that you should go. I love that. I love that. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Proverbs 19, 2, it is not good that the soul should be without knowledge. So it's very important at this critical time, God teaching you as your senior partner, leading you in the way that you should go. Leading you to profit. Leading you to do the things that you need to do. Leading you to lead that company. And you know, in uh, verse 18, he said, Oh, that you will heed to my commandment. Because so it's possible. Because we have done something for a number of years. We have become proficient in them. It's just, I mean, a temptation to put ourselves in auto response to things. No. 
David won all the battles because for every battle, there was a different strategy. And you will always see it. Shall I? Shall I? And God can say, stay. God can say, move. God can say, attack it this way. That is our life as believers. You know what God has given us that makes our lives very easy? He has given us his word. He has given us his spirit. And he has also given us the will to obey him. So at this time, please learn it. Learn it. How do children go? They learn. They watch their parents. They watch adults around them. So learn. I love the song. Lord, we want to know the way of your spirit. (laughs) We want to know it. Because it's not a natural thing. The natural thing is that everything that goes up must come down. But there are supernatural things that happen. When plane has to fly, he suspends the law of gravity. He introduces a higher law, the law law of aerodynamics. Is that not what Romans 8 says? There is now, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. What the Lord could not do in that it was weak in the flesh. God, at the appointed time, said his only begotten son. So we are operating with a higher law. And so we solve through the turbulence of life. Can you pray in other tongues for some few minutes? Just pray in other tongues. Yes, just pray in other tongues. There is an exchange going on in this place. There is a transaction going on. You, you, there is a clarity. You know what to do. You know how to do it. You know when to do it. You know where to do it. With, you know with whom to do it. The highs of our understanding are flooded with light. Thank you, Lord. From this service, that phone call comes in. That meeting that has been penned in hold. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. So you develop unusual hunger and thirst. You learn to hear the Holy Spirit. And then totally you press into the flow. You press into the flow. That's the only way to be divinely inspired. You know, while I was, I'm still coming up in the faith. But in those days, when I go into services and they say the Lord is here, I will be saying, where is, where is he? Because why? I don't know how to press. I'm looking for physical evidences. I'm looking on the outside. Whereas where to press is on the inside. And that's why it's very good. You shut your eyes. I don't care who you are, whether you are green, whether you are yellow, whether you are, I don't know. I don't know. You lose yourself to gain him completely. And when you begin to practice that, it comes to a point where anything in this world doesn't make any sense to you except his will for your life. We're in that season. And God's, God wants people to chase him. We love him, but he wants us to chase him. Chase him. Chase him. Jacob turned the economy, the fortune of his generation. Laban changed his salary 14 times. Please, let me also say this. I don't know who I'm saying this to. Please, if they have not used you, you can't make progress in life. Somebody must use you. Are you listening to me this morning? Somebody must use you. The using, it may be like to the detriment in your own hands, but it's preparing you for greatness. I mean, people from this side, our brothers and sisters, they understand it. The principle of apprenticeship. Somebody must use you. You are not ready for greatness if somebody has not used you. I didn't start as a pastor, ma. Started as an usher, not ushers in the auditorium. Usher does watch toilets because we use, my church used to use a cinema house. And they watch film Thursday to Sunday. So the other people with us are ladies. So they would have deposits enough for us. So we clean. 
joyfully. We go and listen to the message after the service. Maybe small time, they now say, maybe at departmental meeting, brother, your share. I say, brother, your share. So I just repeat my mess, pastor's message. So small time, they ask us to, they say, we want to do school of ministry, that there's something called the call of God. I say, really? You know, see, this Christianity that people are practicing now, it's not about get, getting, getting. It's more like giving, giving, giving. You have to give yourself to the Lord before even your offering. Give yourself. Let him know that this is you. Give your desire. Give your ambition. And you know, a lot of the times we are all afraid. No, but when you give, that is where life begins. When you learn to give yourself to him, give your heart to him, give your desire to him. Some of us, even if God is standing before us, some people are stubborn. They say, I don't go grieve. No grief for anybody. <laughs> no, you have to grieve for God, though. I don't believe in all those things. I, 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 I mean, people just come up with all those slogans. But it negates our faith. No grief for anybody. They will soon fire you on that job. <laughs> and when they fire you, you will grieve. <laughs> no, that, that, that's just that. We are the light of the world. Even if anybody knows they grieve. Be the one to agree because you are preparing yourself for greatness. Go and look at it. Anyone who has risen to any top uh, position in their organization, they were used, they were served. But in the being used, somebody took interest in them. Because you are not going to be in a room where people will make conversation about you. Such things are not done on the basis of appraisal. Somebody can even do a job, want to do a contract. They say, well, I don't know this person, but I think this person is a genuine person. Let's give it to him. I've been at such conversation before. So they don't even look at, we have handled this project. We have handled, I have worked at Accenture. I've worked at uh, GT. mm, There are some things that when the glory of God covers your life, when you show up, it's after they've concluded the deal. Well, by the way, you have to submit documents for us to be able to put this in. The message again, be ready to be used. I hope you hear me. Uh, Be ready. That's where we are. Because God is looking for mature souls. Uh, God is looking. I mean, there is something about David. We all read about it. Psalm 78, verses 70 to 72. So there is an aspect. David, God chose David. So there was a calling. And he chose him to lead. And the Bible says he led the people... According to integrity of his heart, that's character. There are three C's there. And he said, by the skillfulness of his hand, that's competence. So, calling, character, competence. Calling, character, confidence, competence. It's not just in ministry alone. Of course, for those of us in ministry, it's on a higher level. It's on a higher stage. But even in business, you have to have a calling into that space. That's where your professional competency comes in. But beyond that, there are character. There are times you will win in business. There are times you won't win. There are times you just make, you just break even. But hey, there is that aspect that where God is taking you to. It is the aspect of that character. And Jesus said it to us. Whoever is not faithful in the righteous mammal, true riches can be, com- com- be committed into his hand. Whoever cannot be faithful in another man's home, you, they can't commit things. So there is a proving. Joseph interpreted dreams for his brothers, for the prisoners, before he got to Pharaoh. I'm not saying that we, need, we follow those steps, but it's necessary for you to know them. So that you can know where you are in your own season of life. Can I have an amen this morning? Yes. So you learn to press into the flow. So that you can be divinely inspired. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. I want to read it to us in the TPT. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. Very instructive. 
said the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we need to read all these other translations so that you can get a good grasp of the meal. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You've heard that many times. Go to other translations. He said the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. He said the immature one. God, if you don't, if you don't come now, I will pass slide. And God is looking at you, just from slide. And then last slide. He hasn't changed. He, he wants us to develop. As many as are led. As many as are led. Look at what he says. He said, you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Leading back into fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance. And folding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned. As he rises within us, our spirit joined to him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. Let me say something to you this morning. If you follow this God, he will never mismanage your life. He will never. He will never. If you follow him all utterly, he will never, 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 never. So, as I begin to wrap up this morning... I saw something in Isaiah 37, which represents the now that we live in. In Isaiah 37, 3, this is what happened when you hear the word like this. It's to create EDD for you. EDD simply means a set date for good news. But EDD is not always good. When there is no strength to deliver. And Isaiah 37 3 talks about it. But now, I want us to do something this morning. With the faith, Petrach, it's the same faith, it's the same narrative, it's the same result that we must get. Please, you don't have a different Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead, that's the one in you and me today. It's not a different Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 11 says, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, we quicken, we make alive. The resurrection power is still at work. So we can look at the patriarch of faith. We have confidence. We are surrounded by a cloud of great witnesses. He said, let us fix our faith on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the author, is the sustainer, is the finisher of our faith. Let's fix our gaze on him. There was a day, Jesus and his disciple, I mean, they were crossing the sea. And then the Bible says, there arose a storm. So storm, we always arise. But they were, they were good enough. There are two stories I want to use. They were good enough to go wake Jesus. So sometimes, if you allow Jesus to sleep in your boat, you need to wake him up. Master carried out down that we perish. And then he came and he rebuked the wind. And that changed their perspective of faith. He said, who is this man that even the wind and the wave obey him? There was another day they were traveling. Peter, in his usual thing, I know we abuse him. But I'm not sure you and I can dare that. And then they saw a ghost. You know, this superstition has always been even from Bible time. They said, ghost! But Peter, out of persuasion, he said, no, it's the master. And he said, master, if you are the one, bid me to come. His focus was on the master. So, as long as that focus was on the master, Peter actually walked on water. He defied the natural situation and circumstances. And you know one good thing we abuse him? He said, Peter was sinking because his wave wavered. But it wasn't recorded that Jesus backed Peter back into the ship. 
He must have walked on the water with Jesus again. It wasn't recorded. So he's like, you are now beside me. Let's walk. And they walk back into this boat. It was recorded. It will have taught us. In your walk of faith, when things are not happening, just ask Jesus to back you. Jesus, oh, back me. No, no. He walked back with the master into the water. TCC, let's frame this rainy season. Number one thing, there is no fear here. Yeah, number one, there is no fear. You can't drown. There are a great cloud of witnesses, brothers and sisters here. You cannot doubt. You can't drown. There is no fear. There is no doubt. There is no unbelief here. It is not permitted in TCC. On timely death, it doesn't happen here. Marriage failure, it doesn't happen here. Rejection, it doesn't operate here. Constant fear of the future, it doesn't operate here. Depression, no way here. You know what causes depression? From the Bible, Proverbs 12, 25. It said anxiety in the heart causes depression. But a good word makes it glad. A good word. A good word. And what, is, what are those anxiety? Jesus enumerated them in Matthew chapter 6. And he says, look at the boats. They need that slow. They don't even have job description like message put it. Yet, God in his infinite sovereignty feeds them. He said, how much more you and I who are created in his own image. God will never abandon us. I say again, no fear here. No doubt here. No unbelief here. Please don't sink into that pit. Don't. Don't. Uh, this night, I mean, this day, and I'm, uh, please forgive me. I'm not in any way saying those who are going through that season, they don't know what they are doing, they don't have faith. That's not what I'm saying. But this, now, this season now, part of the things you hear is that my depression, my mental illness, my, my mental wellness. Uh, even my own daughter will tell me when I rat to her, he say, please, my mental health. I said, which mental health? Which went ahead? A good word. A good word. You have to study. So a good word. You have to be a woman of yourself. A good word. He said, my, my classmate. I said, I don't know your classmate. I don't want to know that. I know you. You are a child of destiny. You are on a journey into greatness. A good word. A good word. So like I said, if you have bout with depression, go study Matthew chapter 6. And the conclusion is that seek ye first. Let God has his way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek you first. I mean, in, 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 read it in message. He said people are concerned with designer wares. No, read it. Whatever you have, I'm saying this under God and I keep saying it. Whatever you have, make sure it's clean. Wear it that way. You know, sometimes people ask me in church, I like the tie you wore last week. I said, I can't remember. And I, that's the truth. I'm not joking. Me, the wearer or the weary, cannot remember. <laughs> there are better things to be remembered. There are better things. There are better things. There are better things. Please. No fear here. No doubt here. No unbelief here. That's the season that we are in. Secondly, apply the force of faith. Apply it. There are things that are going to confront us in this season. All we are looking at is our EDD. So attack whatever it is by the force of faith. Let me read something to you so that it can help you. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I read from the message. It's very instructive. From verse 1, he said, so here is what I want you to do. God helping you. He said, take your everyday, ordinary life. 
You're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture. That's all we they do for my family. Which family? Hold on you. Nobody, they pass this time. This one where I don't pass self. Nah, no, there, are, there is more. There's more. It says embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. He said, instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from inside out. A lot of people, they think that change is outside him. No, it's from inside out. He's talking about the renewer, the perspective. I used to be very shy in the natural. I don't talk to anyone. I can't even hold a conversation in a room. Then the difference, what, what he has made. I can do this thing for, I trained for seven hours yesterday. I can do it. Once you give me light and music. I may stay in this company. I don't bother what goes on outside. I don't mean outside. But the truth is that there is a change that happens. You have to start interacting. You have to bring out words from you. And that's what the gospel has done. It transforms. It changes our lives. If it is the gospel, it must change our lives. If it's not changing your life and my life, then it is not the gospel. And if it is not the gospel, I don't want it. We can easily sleep to the culture of this world and fit into it and then maintain the status quo. The world status quo be in this mess that we find ourselves. And because there are many people in that mess, so we think that it is normal. It is not normal. God wants us to live a higher life. So we can't fit into this culture because it will drag us to his level of immaturity. It will drag us to his level of what we can see, what we can touch, what we can taste, what we can hear, what we can feel. Life in the spirit is not about feeling. It's about persuasion. When you are persuaded, when you are confident, you can feel, or whether you feel or you don't feel, it doesn't matter. You know, you know, for example, God is here this morning. Why? He said, we are two or three are gathered together in his name. I don't care how Disturb you have been. There is no devil here. They, they feel go wait for outside door. Hey, but because you understand the truth here, they don't feel capture it. Even if the whole hell is around, which is wizard, if you know the address, tell, send, I will send, you, send them to me. And I will even tell, send my own phone number to them. <laughs> no. We have the dominion mandate. What we have is real and tangible. What we have is the power that makes the heavens and the earth. So no matter the challenges of life, the storm of life, we have the capacity to handle it. I understand. I used to be afraid of turbulence, man. So I study about turbulence. Turbulence doesn't bring down a plane. So just enjoy the ride. It's shaking. It doesn't. Then I, I follow many pilots. So I've been convinced. So when it's shaking, I'm doing some other things. No matter if Jesus is the captain, is the pilot of your life, no turbulence, no storm of life. Hey, they say, ah, uh, you don't go get children. Not when I'm alive. They will soon leave because your children must come. Lamentation 3 says, who is he that says and it comes to pass? When the Lord commanded it not, he said to subvert a man. So God is looking at you to subvert a man in his approved course. The Lord does not approve it. The Bible says, so you can't give in to worry. I'm about to round up. My time is up. You can't give in to worry. Because why? Sometimes we worry. The same thing that God is already working on. We lose our sleep. Wherever you are taking the work of God, you are designed to sleep and slumber. It's only God who does not sleep and slumber. So when you wake up equally with him, with your worry, you are taking off his job. And if you are taking off his job, he leaves it to you. You can handle it yourself. And you know what we say? We say we can fix it. You cannot fix it.
because you don't have any authority, one single one. You don't have any power against the devil, but you have authority given to you. It doesn't matter how the trailer, block of trailers are coming on this road. If someone is in that uniform, yellow and black, and he says, it just like that, the trailer, all of them, they have to stop. If he's backing them and he's doing like that, they stop. Because why? if you jam that man, you have jammed the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we have that exousia, that delegated authority, and we must begin to use it in corporate board meetings, in at work spaces, we must dominate, we must take charge. When you enter, an aura must enter. So that's what we are trading in. It's called the supernatural. It's not flimsy life. It's not a life that is just flaky. It's not a life that moves with the tide. No, it's a fixed life. We are looking unto Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith. Stand with me today. Stand with me. I want us to do a little speaking this morning. Let's just speak for... And I give you five minutes. Let's just pray. Pray, pray, pray. Just open your mouth and pray. Your voice, your faith must have a voice. Can you just pray? I don't know where you are. Just pray this morning. I want you to throw a challenge. Throw a challenge. This is the week. Yes, Lord, this is the week. This is the week of divine favor. This is the week we have live answers to you. This is the week. TCC, take your eyes off the natural completely. Put it on Jesus, the author, the sustainer, and finisher of your faith. I want you to speak this morning. The season of the miraculous is here. The woman with the issue of blood, he said, if I may touch. That's the time that is being given to you now. I want you to pray. Touch the hem of his garment. He's faithful. He's just. Favor has been released upon you. The laws are turned in your favor. The scepter of divine favor is your signature. Yes, Lord, nations are beckoning unto you. You bear the solution for the problem of this city, of this nation. You are a carrier and an operator of God's blessing. Yes, Lord, everything that is lost in your life is restored to you. There is a new beginning. There is no distraction, no fear, no uncertainty. There is power for completion. You are ushered into a new land. The new land. We are the rain of heaven fall upon that land. I want you to move your mouth this morning to move whatever mountain. Faith has a voice. Let that situation hear your voice this morning. Faith has a voice. It deals with the impossible situation. You say to the mountain, in Mark 11, you say three times, you say. So I want your speaking to be hope three times over. Yes, Lord, you say, you say, you say. He said, you shall have whatever you say. 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 You must check on what you are saying. And I want you to start that discipline from this service this morning. Because faith speaks. Faith speaks. It doesn't mumble words. Faith speaks as the one who has authority. The word of God is our spoken entity. We can say to the mountain, move and it moves. We can say to this one, go and it goes. We can say to this one, comes and it is come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. If you are sick in your body, your right hand up. You are sick in your body. Yeah. People around them, we are believers. Just lay your hands on them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree healing in this room. The power of God is present here to heal. Just believers around them, just put your hand. He said, we shall lay hand on the sick. And they shall recover. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Thank you because you are wounded for our transgressions. You are bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace has been laid upon you. And by your stripes we are healed. Thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Lord, thank you for your healing power in their lungs, in their muscles, in their bloodstream, in their respiratory organs excretory organs. Lord, thank you for healing and restoration back to earth. We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your glorious name. In Jesus' precious name. I want us to celebrate the gift of God. One more time, let's celebrate Pastor Kichi. Thank you. Thank you.